Hello, Driving Intelligence Community. In a prior video, I talked about improving the aerodynamics of this truck. That's why I went back to the stock mirrors, getting rid of the tow mirrors. And I also mentioned in there that I'm going to put a spoiler on the front of this to replace the little chin spoiler on the front. You can see I've already got this 99 Tahoe spoiler I ripped off of a junkyard. And I'm going to have to modify a little bit, actually shorten it because the Tahoe is a little wider. And I'm going to put it into the same screw holes that exist for this lower lip here. As I mentioned in that prior video, a lot of the vehicles that come out now with a really deep chin spoiler. It's very flexible, so if they hit a curb, it's not a big problem. It won't damage it. Uh, I think that with the 4x4s, they wanted it higher. I don't do a lot of off-roading, so it's not going to cause me a problem. But I'm hoping that this inch and a half spoiler going to about a 4.5 to 5 inch spoiler is going to improve some of the aerodynamics going underneath the vehicle where the wind isn't getting caught up with all of the, uh, the items that are underneath the vehicle, like the transmission, the engine, the axles, the suspension, etc., Those all create a lot of turbulence, cause a lot of drag on the vehicle, and hopefully uh, this is going to eliminate that kind of wind turbulence under the vehicle, or at least some of it, because it's not going down to the ground and improve the aerodynamics of this truck. Here's a good view of how much deeper the new spoiler is gonna be. It is literally three times deeper than the top one. This is about as deep as it gets, and you can see that there really is no blockage in the center, very little. So that's going to really affect the wind. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it. Here's the center. I'm going to cut it here and here so that this section overlaps with the side pieces because, again, I mentioned that it's just too long. You can see the distance here. Let's get cutting. All right, you can see I've cut it into three pieces. I just took the center section out and it'll overlap as I'm showing it here. Now all I gotta do is fit each side up. I'm gonna have to cut new holes and match up with the holes in my bumper, the stock holes in the stock spoiler that is. Bolt these two sides up, then I'll just bolt this in front and we'll be done. Mounting the Tahoe spoiler turned out to be pretty easy. You can see it actually lines up perfectly here with the original holes on both the Tahoe spoiler and the F-150 spoiler. And then there were a few street strategic places I could bolt it in, but you can see I left out a couple here and I had to draw, drill some extra ones. And here you see where I bolted the two sections together so that it would overlap and uh, be a continuous spoiler. So it's actually extremely easy. I got lucky with the first uh, pick of the draw when I went to the junkyard. And we're finished. Just added some additional bolts right here to stabilize it against the side pieces. It's all screwed in, it's sturdy, and now we have to test it. I, I'm not sure this is uh, this four and a half inches is gonna actually make a difference uh, going down the road, but we'll see. Now on to the results. As I demonstrated in my prior video, I improved fuel economy 0.8 miles per gallon by removing the huge tow mirrors and returning to the stock F-150 mirrors. To ensure this is an apples to apples comparison, all the test parameters for this spoiler test remain the same. Speed, fueling station, highway route. The deeper Tahoe spoiler delivered 0.3 miles per gallon improvement over the shallow stock spoiler. All these fuel economy videos are included in a playlist that I'll link below in the description of this video. So the fuel economy results definitely show there is some benefit to a front spoiler. Three tenths of a mile per gallon is not bad, uh, but there is, uh, in retrospect, a reason why it's not any better than it could have been. If you look at this lower spoiler, first of all, it's not quite as deep as the modern spoilers, but that's not the biggest issue. You can see where it's stopping much inboard of the tire. Now, as I understand it from studying this, the tires create a lot of resistance going down the road, and that's why you see spoilers going all the way across and outside those front tires to direct the wind around the vehicle so that that big dam of a tire, it's like a wind dam, is preventing the vehicle from moving forward. So in the future, I might create my own custom spoiler that extends all the way down protecting the front of this vehicle. Now there are spoilers available out there that I could buy like the uh, the Lightning spoilers or the Harley Davidson F-150 spoilers but unfortunately I think they're a little too sporty for if we will drive that's why I kind of want to design and mock up my own. So stay, stay tuned to see if I do accomplish that sometime in the future. Thanks for watching Driving Intelligence.